Hi, I'm Stephen Budden. I talk about healing and awakening for creatives and entrepreneurs. And what I want to talk about today is healing using the Christ force. Now, be forewarned that there's been a lot of indoctrination against this thing called the Christ force by various factions of the powers that be. So just know that when I say that, you may feel some response. On the other side, there's people that are very programmed into one belief set or, the, or another, and they really think they know what what's happening <laughs> because someone told them. And I just want to give you another perspective so that you can use this force for healing. <clears throat> Ari Thorson is a clairvoyant and a veterinarian and acupuncturist and he can see entities coming and going from the body as he treats with herbs and other things so in his cosmology the way he explains it in uh, the luciferic the lucifer deception and a few other books written in the last few years he uh, says that medicine was co-opted during the time of the yellow emperor he goes into great detail on when and why this happens happened and the point is that it happened in order to change medicine from a thing that could heal and um, transform the entities that were in someone's system into one that would merely translocate disease. So this word translocation is very uh, important in this system. He said that the elements were changed from 7 to 5 and various other treatments were tweaked. And I wrote in my book, Flow, an illuminated training manual, that I thought ancient uh, Indian Ayurvedic medicine had been co-opted as well. Clearly, it has. <laughs> All systems have. It's like once a system reaches enough of a following, it gets co-opted by the powers that be so that, that it can become a control structure. Good. Now that we have that mystery out of the way, we can move toward actual healing. Now, Ari Thorson was pondering how to uh, heal and then he read um, or he heard something in a lecture by Judith Von Hall and she was talking about healing and the Christ force and the heart and what he started to do was put the heart into put the Christ force what he called the Christ force force into the heart or which he sometimes calls the C point and it's not exactly the heart it's like this little point uh, in the heart center where you go through the back and then you turn around so it's written about in a lot of mystical literature. Disease happens when uh, the luciferic forces and the aromatic forces start to encroach on the body and then they overlap. I have a fractured wrist right now, full disclosure. So this overlap, it's interesting to me, if you think of a circle up here and a circle down here, where the overlap happens, it's like a little, uh, the space between a vesica Pisces, the, the Jesus fish. So if you imagine sending the Christ force right into that Jesus fish, right in your heart, it starts to spread those out. Most practitioners want to, I'll treat the ailment, I'll heal the ailment. And likewise, I have done that as well. And that works to some degree. However, uh, in this system, it only translocates the disease. It's like in, in the biblical account when Jesus sends the uh, unclean spirits into the swine and they run off a cliff. Ari Thorson worked with animals and humans so he could kind of see them translocating into different beings and out into the air and sometimes with certain medicines they'd leave and then there'd be a more of a clearing and they would come back stronger if you look up the definition of uh, the origin of the word pharmacy and pharmacopoeia in greek there there are a few different definitions there's a magical witchcraft definition and then there's the medical definition and it's certainly being used more in the magical witchcraft definition today. If you think of anyone wanting to promote medicine to the whole culture as a control thing, then there you go. This stems back longer than we thought. You would think, oh, when Rockefeller Medicine, or when Ro the Rockefellers took over the medical establishment and shut down all the herbal schools and did the best they could to eradicate this other healing knowledge, it started long before that. That's just the co-opting of one system. And even herbs, if herbs translocate disease so that it comes back, shamans knew about this. They treated it in different ways. So how do you get to the origin, the root of an issue? Um, this, Ari says he was sitting on the edge of the desert, this Arabic 
desert and these jinns started running to him, these horrible creatures, and he put up the sign of Michael, Mike I.L., um, which is like a part version of a star, and these, these creatures went away. Now, they were, they were attempting to enter him. To enter a being means you kind of transmute it, overtake it, um, and we can enter beings and transform them. Our energy, our astral energy, or whatever. So how do you uh, transform a disease instead of merely relocating it into another member of your ancestry, or your progeny, or your friend, or your pet? And that this idea is using that Christ force, which didn't originate with Jesus. There are more ancient versions of this Christ force. Jesus was uh, in anthroposophical accounts in Rudolf Steiner, the uh, embodiment of the solar logos in perfect harmony with human, so that God and human did come together. They think in a way they hadn't before. However, if you ever read uh, Dolores Cannon, it's They Walked with Jesus, the second book. She, she would find people to hypnotize and they'd go back to past lives. And she would, after hundreds of boring stories, she would find one, one that was fascinating. She found two people that had interacted with Jesus. And in They Walked with Jesus, she gives the account of a woman. Um, Nadia, I believe her name was. And she became a follower of Jesus. She had to hide the fact that she was a woman. But Jesus showed her how to heal these things. And he does the same thing. He says there's, in chapter 7, he says there's a heart chakra on the palm. She's trying to translate this. And you put it on, first he touched the crown of the head and then he would put it on the heart. And just stay there until there was peace. So he was filling up this center with the Christ force um, of which he was a conduit and so are many of us that purify ourselves. And even when we are unclean, we can be a conduit through intention. Um, I think we can build up that force in ourselves. So this seems to happen outside of religion. So you help someone clean themselves, their thoughts, their emotions, their responses, and then you enter and you, you fill them up with this Christ force. Instead of treating the uh, the... Lucifer and Ahriman entities also uh, uh, associate with yin and yang. So it's very linked to the Chinese medicine aspect. If you ever study Tibetan medicine, you'll see there's all these little entities involved. <laughs> like there's these entities that come with the rain and these entities come with the sun and these entities that like over flood your liver. And um, so likely that these early seers were seeing these little things and Ari even sometimes sees, there's this kind of a sad story about this village of Indians and they were, they were saying, oh, we used to commune with all the nature spirits until they put electricity in, and now we don't. So the electricity, kind of the vibration pushes away either the awareness or the entities themselves. So this is just another way to look at and think about, does it sound outlandish? Does it sound far-fetched? You can also use this Christ point toward technology. Like Ari Thorson was visiting some uh, some people called him because their horses were laying in a field they were almost dead and they called him because he was a vet, so he came and he saw that they had put up a cell tower right next to that field, and he he meditated and he sent the Christ force to the midpoint. He sent it to the midpoint, always the midpoint of the animal or human or technology. And the midpoint is sometimes a physical midpoint, sometimes it's a midpoint of like. Um, a response to that technology, like overexcitement or complete apathy, what's the midpoint? And you can transmute tech, any technology. So then it starts to give off a vital living force instead of this, this death force. And um, so practice that. We can do that with ourselves. We can do that with our loved ones. The situation is often changing. But I think it was in 1924, Christ became available in the, like the astral realm and Steiner went to meet him and then <laughs> he became available recently I think it was 2019 in the elemental realm so there's this I'm always fascinated by the story of this Christ being in person and energetic this holy spirit whatever you want to call it that gradually filtered out in the world and created a, a whole religion and there's like a, a church that's the center of every town in Europe and the United States I mean think about how pervasive it is it's fascinating to me now that it grows in seen and unseen ways. So it starts to become more and more powerful, more and more beautiful and more and more effective as a healing modality. So once again, these, these things are encroaching. 
um, one's a matter of overindulgence, the diseases of affluence, and one's a matter of underindulgence. And as they overlap, disease starts to form. And the symptoms are the upper and the symptoms are the lower. So this is a beautiful, as we can refine it and get it to work well. I mentioned that he had heard a lecture by Judith Von Hall, who she was an architect who received the stigmata because her faith in Christ was so strong. And then she gave lectures and she'll go back uh, sort of remote viewing and look at the crucifixion of Jesus. She'll look at the Last Supper. She'll listen to the she said he did speak what we call the Lord's Prayer, which is the Jesus Prayer. Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, when he was asked, how do you pray? And she heard it in Aramaic, and she brought it back to translate. So Ari got some of the clues from her about how to heal things, just from her awareness. She's not a healer per se. And um, so those are some of the systems we can use to make practical some of what you may be studying or you, what you may be learning or you, what you may have learned your whole life. I don't know that you have to necessarily be a healer, though maybe there's a certain archetype or psychology or type that makes that more more attainable, more accessible for you. And that's that's all I have to say for today. I hope that helps you find some clarity around healing and the Christ force and what is it. One more thing I want to say is that people think they're utterly certain about what the Christ force is. And Steiner, who studied it his whole life, he always called it the mystery of Golgotha. Like it's up to us over time, over hundreds of years, over thousands of years to figure out and put together what that really meant for humanity and for ourselves and for the beings involved. So it's a great mystery. It's not a thing you, you know because someone up on, you know, on a pedestal told you something. So I love the aspect of continuing to dance and fall in love with and understand like understand the mystery <laughs> surrounding this mystery and as they say in the Tao Te Ching darkness within darkness the gateway to all understanding thank you i'll talk to you soon